So what is it about your favorite song that makes you want to tap your feet or clap your hands? Um, that characteristic of music that makes you want to get up and dance, that's the beat. It's the underlying beat. And the fact that you can hear that is remarkably special. It's a challenging thing to do, and humans do it so effortlessly, we don't give it a second thought. You can group the beats in music in different ways. So sometimes the beat in music just goes one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But sometimes it does more complex things, like maybe one, two, three, four, five. And we used to think in our research field that those types of structures were just inherently more complex. Gradually, what we realized is if you're from somewhere like Bulgaria, where those types of structures are really common, you don't have any trouble with them. So what this actually means is that you're good at processing whatever you have experience with, whatever's common in the world around you. So that presupposes that your development and your experiences as a child are important for how you function as an adult. But in fact, no one has really looked at this question in young children. So the focus of my dissertation has been examining what children can do and can't do and when they start to look like adults in their culture. But asking children a straight question is not always a recipe for success. So when we bring them into the lab, we'll do things like show them movies of puppets playing drums. And one puppet will be a good drummer, but the other one might drum too fast or too slow or too early or too late. Okay. And we'll say, who gets the prize? Who was better? What we find is that by the time you're five years old, even if you've never had a music lesson in your life, you're like the adults in your culture. So when the music goes one, two, three, four, just the way you're used to, you can notice when one of the puppets makes a mistake. If the music starts going one, two, three, four, five, you don't notice those problems anymore. So in fact, by the time you're five years old, you're already enculturated to that environment you're growing up in. It's like if someone who speaks a foreign language is trying to explain to you how two sounds are different and you cannot hear the difference between those two sounds, much less produce them. It's the same type of perceptual phenomenon. But perception and production are also closely related. So one of the things we're doing now is having kids come in and drum to music. And we're actually finding that kids who are better listeners, who are more sensitive to those adjustments, are also better drummers because your auditory system and your motor system are really closely linked. So we've just started some fascinating follow-up work with kids who have motor skills deficits because we know that those kids who have motor skills problems aren't going to be good tappers. They're going to have a hard time tapping along to music on a drum. The question is, given that your perception and your action systems are closely related, will children who have motor skills problems also have fundamentally different perceptual systems than children who don't? So we're exploring these types of questions right now. We're also hoping maybe to go outside the lab and look at some children from a culture like Bulgaria to see if they too are like the adults in the world around them. So this work has implications above and beyond just lab research, but it's fascinating to see what these kids can do. Thank you.